Hey folks, Carl here and welcome to episode 11 and I'm not going to take my socks off I didn't tell you what it was for The King Tiger Okay folks, so we are moving on with the weathering of the King Tiger. Now the primary stuff we are using to do the weathering is the UMP washes and we are using dark dirt and light dirt. Now we're giving a first coat of light dirt, letting that dry, do what we want with it and then we're going over very lightly with dark dirt. Now, so far we have done the wheels and we have these ones here these are primarily the light dirt because obviously with them being the whole red couldn't see a huge amount of the dark dirt so these look like they still need a little bit of brushing off so that is those and on the light on the lighter wheels we have a bit more of the dark dirt so we shan't be going this heavy on the main hull um, got another couple of wheels there as well and we have the drive shafts now I think these ones have turned out the best these have got the light dirt down first then covered with a very light covering of the dark dirt. Quite difficult to see on this camera, it's not the greatest picking up the little detail but they're looking good so far. So yeah, like I was saying the main hull and the turret we shall not be going as heavy. Um, what we will be doing is washing over quite heavily on the open areas with the light dirt and then brushing it off or wiping it off but we should go quite lightly inside here where there's tools and things like that once that's drying off we will then go in with the dark dirt and get in more of the recesses where there are recesses in the tank and around the edges of things and stuff like that and inside any of the little lines and things like that to try and make the detail show so I am going to carry on getting this done and once I've done each piece I will start the camera off and show you what it is we've done and what we've achieved. So talk to you in a moment. Okay we're back before we start and I'm just going to show you this. This is the light dirt. Now it looks quite dark when you're putting it on but it actually dries very very light. So just be aware you don't go putting it on too heavy because you think or too light because you think it's quite dirty and it's not um, if I get a small piece and we just put a dab on here so you can see that you see how dark it looks now if I leave that to dry it'll take a few moments It actually dries really, really light. Get the airbrush and speed it up. As you can see, that has almost gone to a point where you can't, cannot see it to show you how light that goes so just be careful when you're putting this stuff on it looks really really dark you can see the color difference there now look at that quite a dramatic change and if we now wipe that off with a little bit of water As always, we don't want the cloth too wet, and then we're just going to wipe it off. Like so. 
so and that is all as we are looking for and then once we go within with the dark dirt we won't go over quite as heavy and that will leave a different shade of dirt in there and that will dry lighter but not quite so dramatically so I shall continue and we'll talk to you shortly okay that is the first layer of the light dirt on now it's quite subtle you can see it more in some places than others you can see it inside here you can see it around there and it is very very slightly highlighting the edges of the hatch and places like that um, look here there's very small and subtle bits inside where these side skirts connect up here where the, the chain is sitting so it looks like almost like a watermark I'm still going around and taking bits and pieces off but yeah it is there and it is very very subtle yeah, like I say you can see it in some places more than others now I'm deliberately leaving you can see it on here at the top of this handle underneath these tools so that is the first layer on now we are going to do near enough exactly the same again but we aren't going to be putting as much on with the dark dirt so I should be back in a moment hey folks so we are moving on with putting the black on now this side I did the normal way we brushed it on like we've done on this side just on where we wanted it and we took this side off with a damp cloth and this side I'm trying something different instead of taking it off with a damp cloth with allowing it to dry completely and then taking it off with a brush and it's not quite taking enough off um, the bits it is leaving on look very very similar to this side but you can just about make out the lines where you've painted on so all we're doing is going over with a, a reasonably stiff brush and taking off the excess like so it's close but it's not quite there it is leaving that slight little line on so I've got it to there I'm now going to go over with a damp cloth and there we go those lines are gone so we're not aiming to leave a huge amount on we want this weathering to be quite subtle so it's not a huge amount to see not with this camera anyway so you can see it's just leaving a little bit in the recesses um, if you look at this side see the difference so we've still got to wash this off because this has just been painted on So, oh, just thought I'd uh, show you that we're trying, not just with a damp cloth, we're trying other ways, trying different experiments, see if we can get things to work. And although it worked, it wasn't superb, so we are going to continue. So, I shall talk to you shortly. Okay folks, we're back again. We've literally just finished taking this part off and what I have discovered with the brush is you can get the majority of it with your damp cloth, tissue, whatever but some of the places are quite difficult to get into and reach places where there's bits sticking up like, like these little things here and the brush is very good for getting in there 
from taking off any access that you don't want. Um, it may very well be that the model you're doing, you want a huge amount of dirt and filth in there. Unfortunately, I don't. So, like I say, I am putting it on and then taking the mass majority of it off. And also, when you're doing this, you can get streak lines. The brush is very good for taking those away as well and getting rid of streak lines. So, there's the front of the tank almost done. So, I shall continue and talk to you shortly. Okay folks, that is the upper hull complete. Um, nice, subtle wash not too much and yeah all as we've used is UMPs light dirt and UMPs dark dirt so I am going to go and finish off the turret and the lower hull and then we can start to put it together and then we can look at the final parts of some powders so as soon as I've got this all washed, we shall take another look. So I'll talk to you in a moment. Okay, folks, that is the top of the tank complete and done. So we haven't done too much weathering on there. There's just bits and pieces to make it look that little bit dirty. Um, so that is the upper hull and the turret and the gun done with the clay washes we have also gone and done and put we put the tracks on as well but we've done the back panel again not too much just enough to make it look that little bit dirty now these tracks are still drying in place and we need to put something on them and weigh them down and glue them to the top of those wheels so we are now just going to let everything on here and on here dry and I will get these, I'll just use something like this, a brush, just push it in there and then put a dab of glue on to get them to stick down to look like they're sagging. So I'm going to do all that, I'll let this upper hole dry and then we'll get the two together and then we shall get in there with a little bit of powder for doing exhaust stains and turret stains and probably a little bit of dusting around these air vents here for the engine where a bit of smoke or fumes would have come out so like I say we'll let all this dry get the bits and little bits and pieces done and we'll be back shortly okay folks this is now all dry the tracks are glued and in place so we are now going to add some of um, powders the black we're going to add some to the back panel here at the top of the exhausts uh, we can add some around these grills and grates around the back of here and nothing oh sorry yes the tip of the turret on the muzzle we can add a little bit there so we have a black powder we have a white bit of paper down that we're working on just to keep the desk or we'll try to keep the desk a little bit clean so we want a mid-sized brush around about this size we're going to start off with this muzzle guard and we want to keep the top of the muzzle guard this part clean and we're going to add dust effects all around leading out it helps if I do it on camera we're doing black marking all the way around but we're not going to put any on the tip so a little bit on the brush so and then we're just gonna try my best to keep this on camera without breaking anything and we're just going to start adding some 
almost. Darken this up. So it's going to take some, some going to get started. May very well be that we'll need to do a matte coat before we do this. But a little bit longer. Some is going down. But not a huge amount. Can we see that? It's not really enough. So what we're going to do we're going to step away from this and we're going to go back and we're going to do the mat coat first. So I am going to assemble this tank, put it together because we'll mat it all in one hit. And we shall be back very, very shortly. Okay, folks, that is the mat coat on, and we are now going to apply some of the black Humbrol weathering powder too. We're going to put some around these grills and we're going to put a little bit on the tips of these exhausts and then a little bit on the muzzle brake at the end of the gun. So, you have to excuse the white background. We um, It's there just to catch up any of this excess powder so it doesn't make a mess of my uh, cutting mat which is already a mess. Anyway, waffling. So zoom in and uh, we shall try our best to keep this in shot. So we are going to just go around the edge of this. Uh, we're not going to tr we're going to try and not put too much on the tip. So let's work our way around. build up and there we go we are just going to leave it like that so that is the muzzle brake done we shall zoom out a little bit. And we'll put that to one side and we shall bring in this. So we're going to want to do the same as we've just done there, but we want to do it on the tips of these exhausts. So again, we're just going to go around like so. Just to give it some end as well. Just to give it that used diesel dust look. Just like now we need a bit more underneath there. And there we go. Uh, zoom in a bit. More fingers and thumbs today. Diesel look, dust look on the ends of those. So, last part, and we are done. So, we're just going to dab some onto these air vents. So, not too much. And we're just going to
for that. And all we're going to do is we're going to get our big brush, which is, yep, yeah, and we are just going to brush the excess way, like so. And there we go. Uh, this tank is now complete. All we have to do is put the figures in. If I can find where this goes. There we go. So all we need to do now, like I say, get the figures in and get it onto a diorama. So for now I'm going to take some pictures and I'm going to steal the diorama from the uh, the Panther House for A that we made. So there we go. Done. All finished. So I hope you like it. That is this series of Meng's King Tiger with the Henschel turret. Um, done. So, as always, I'm going to put a slideshow in now. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Be good, be safe, and as always, keep making models, and we shall catch you next time. Ta-ta!